In this video, we're still on the topic of representations of functions as power series, but this time we're going to focus on differentiation and integration of power series. So when you differentiate or integrate a power series, you can do so by each individual term, which is called term by term differentiation and integration. And it's a very useful strategy when you need to integrate functions that don't have elementary antiderivatives, functions that don't have antiderivatives that you can easily compute or evaluate. Also for solving differential equations and for approximating functions by polynomials, which has a lot of applications in other fields of mathematics and computer science. So here's our theorem. If we have a power series and it has a radius of convergence that's non-zero greater than zero, then the function representation f of x, which is c0 plus c1 times x minus a, etc., is differentiable and continuous on the interval a minus r up till a plus r. So that's its um, interval of convergence. And here's the most exciting part. f prime of x, so the derivative of this power series, f of x, is given by notice. The derivative of c0, that would be a constant, goes away. The derivative of c1 times x minus a is just c1, just the constant remains. The derivative of the next term, you bring that 2 down in the front, and then you have 2 times x minus a, c2 stays there, so on and so forth. And notice if you look at the expression now using sigma notation, you just follow your rules of differentiation. So the constant cn remains, and then this exponent n is brought down in the front and then the new exponent is one less n minus one and it still has radius of convergence r so the radius of convergence is preserved through the process of differentiation and then also you anti-differentiate in the same way <clears throat> so you can look at term by term and how you're just taking the constant and multiplying now by x minus a c1 you would multiply by x minus a squared and then divide by 2 and then you do pick up a plus c just like when we normally compute a general antiderivative and so the expression is cn c sub n times x minus a raised to the n plus 1 so the exponent increases by 1 and then you divide by the new exponent and don't forget the radius of convergence is still r so whatever the radius of convergence is for your power series it remains the same if you integrate or differentiate okay keep that in mind so first example, express 1 over 1 minus x squared as a power series by differentiating 1 over 1 minus x, and then what is the radius of convergence? So this time they're telling us basically how to express 1 over 1 minus x squared as a power series. Later on, we're going to have to figure out what to do. So I'm going to start off by taking the derivative with respect to x of 1 over 1 minus x. And I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus x raised to the negative first power. Okay? And so if I take the derivative, following our rules for differentiation, I'll bring negative 1 down in the front. I have 1 minus x. Now it's raised to the negative second times negative 1. So now those two negatives are going to cancel out. And so I'm left with exactly what I was looking for, 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay. So now, instead of directly differentiating 1 over 1 minus x, I'm going to differentiate its power series representation, which we know is the sum, n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. All right? And then I'm going to list out the first few terms here. So this is the derivative with respect to x of 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, etc. So if I take the derivative of 1, that's 0, derivative of x is 1, derivative of x squared is 2x, then 3x squared, then 4x cubed, dot, dot, dot. And then I can write this as the sum, n equals 0 to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1. Now notice... The first term here, when I substitute in n equals 0 into the expression, is just going to give me 0. So I don't need to include it in my sum. In fact, you're going to notice whenever you differentiate a power series, because that first term is a constant, 
in the derivative, it's going to go to zero. <clears throat> so you're going to shift your index up by one because you're going to lose a term. Okay, so I'm left with the sum n equals one to infinity of n times x to the n minus one. And you could have just figured that out by looking here and applying your power rule. So you would bring the exponent n down in the front, decrease the exponent to n minus one, and then you just have to remember to shift your index up by one. Why? Because the derivative of a constant is always zero. Okay, so let's box this. This is done. This is our power series representation for one over one minus x squared. And then it asks for the radius of convergence. Well, don't worry, we don't have to do an extra test or anything like this. I already know the radius of convergence is one because for the power series, one over one minus x, r is one also. And we know by our theorem, the radius of convergence is preserved through the process of differentiation. Okay, good. Now we're going to look at some more examples, but they're not necessarily going to tell us what to do in order to find the power series. So let's see here. Find a power series representation of f of x and its radius of convergence. So I look at f of x and its natural log of 1 plus x. Well, we don't have a nice power series representation off the top of our heads just yet. But I'm thinking about it. I don't want to anti-differentiate, but if I differentiate natural log of 1 plus x, I will end up with a function whose power series representation I can easily find. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So f prime of x is going to be 1 over 1 plus x, which I can rewrite as 1 over 1 minus negative x, right? And then I can write this as a power series. This is the sum, n equals 0 to infinity. I'm going to have negative x to the n, which I know I can rewrite as the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n times x to the n. Now this is the power series representation for f prime of x. This is f prime of x. But that's not what I'm interested in. I need a power series representation for f of x. So what would I do? I would integrate the sum n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n dx. Okay, now focus in. I'm taking the antiderivative with respect to x, so I'm going to increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. The index does not change when you anti-differentiate because you're not going to lose a term. If anything, you're going to pick up a plus c at the end of the process. So this is going to be the sum n equals 0 to infinity. I'm going to have negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1, over n plus 1 plus c. <clears throat> and then from here, if you want to clean up a little bit, notice um, this is an n plus 1 and this is an n plus 1 as well. And it would just look a lot cleaner if those were both raised to the power of n. So if I'm going to decrease right, the expression by one, then I need to increase my index by one. They have to move in opposite directions. So this is gonna be the sum now, n equals one to infinity, and negative one to the n is now gonna be negative one to the n minus one. I'm gonna have x to the n divided by n plus c. All right, now we're not done because I need to find c. So we're putting this on the back burner. How do I find c? Well, to find c, we're going to let x equal 0, OK? And then I'm going to substitute that value of x back into the original function. So f of 0 is the natural log of 1 plus 0, which is the natural log of 1, which is 0. Now I'm going to substitute 0 for x into my actual series. So this means that the sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1. And then now I'm going to substitute in 0 for x to the n over n plus c must equal 0. <clears throat> well, notice when I substitute in 0 for x, every single term in that series is going to be 0. So that whole series sums to 0, which tells me then that c is equal to 0. So what's our answer? 
well, f of x, which equals the natural log of 1 plus x, is equal to the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, of negative 1 to the n minus 1, times x to the n over n. That's the first portion. And then they also asked for the radius of convergence. Can you tell what it is? The radius of convergence is just one, since we know that the radius of convergence equals one for one over one plus x, which is the sum n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the n. So that's our justification. And you don't have to do an additional test or anything like that in order to find that. Okay? Good. Let's look at another case. I think we can make these series a little fancier. So find a power series representation of f of x equals tan inverse of x. Okay. So tan inverse of x Remember, the form that you're after is trying to get it to look like the sum of the geometric series when we substitute in x for r. So I want it to look like 1 over 1 minus x as much as possible. And tan inverse of x doesn't look a thing like it, but its derivative is pretty close. So again, like last time, let's first compute f prime of x. So f prime of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared, which I can rewrite as 1 over... 1 minus negative x squared. So as a power series, this is going to be the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n. Okay? Now remember, I'm not interested in a power series representation for f prime. I need a power series representation for f of x. So I'm going to integrate this. So this means f of x is equal to the integral of the sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, x to the two n, dx. <clears throat> okay, so now let's go through anti-differentiate. Just focus on your exponent here, okay? Everything else, just bring it down. So I'm gonna have the sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, then we'll have x to the two n plus one, divided by two n plus one, plus c. All right? Good. So now I need to find c. Do you remember what we do? Well, you're going to substitute in, in this case again, 0 for x. You want to substitute in for x whatever would basically make all of the terms of the series 0. So if it's centered at a and it's centered at 0 in this case, I'm going to substitute in 0. But if you had maybe like in these parentheses an x minus 3 or something different, then you would plug in 3 for x, okay? You just want to knock out all the terms of the series. So to find c, we're going to let x equals 0. Okay, so f of 0 is tan inverse of 0, which is 0. And then that's also equal to the sum, n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. This is going to be 0 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 plus c. So all of these terms are going to be a 0, which means c is 0 again. Okay. So now I can write out my function. I know that f of x <clears throat> is equal to the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. Now, what is my radius of convergence? Well, let's see here. I know that I require r which in this case, where did we build that from? It was right here. This was my r, negative x squared. So the absolute value of negative x squared has to be strictly less than one, which means r is equal to one for the power series n equals zero to infinity of negative x squared to the n. So that means r is equal to one for f of x also. 
And let's box this. Okay. Oh, one side note I did want to point out. I didn't shift the indices here like I did in the last problem because if I made N1, then I would have to replace N with N minus one in the expression for the terms and then distributing that would make it 2n minus 2 plus 1. So I'd have 2n minus 1 and 2n minus 1 doesn't look any better than 2n plus 1. So there's no point in doing it for this particular series. It doesn't make it look more simple. All right. Good. Last example, evaluate the integral of t over 1 minus t cubed dt as a power series and find the radius of convergence. Now this is always fun because you might think, oh my goodness, I've learned so many integration techniques in calculus too. We have biparts, we have trig sub, we have partial fractions, we have so many things. I could probably anti-differentiate anything that came my way and that's actually not the case at all. So a lot of the times you'll run into another integral that you can only evaluate using a power series representation for the integrand. So they're telling us that's precisely what we need to do here. So basically I have the integral of t over 1 minus t cubed dt. And I'm not going to be able, or I'm not instructed to anti-differentiate this directly. So I'm going to evaluate instead the integral of some power series. So my first job is to figure out a power series representation for t over 1 minus t cubed. Well, that won't be too bad. I can write it as t times 1 over 1 minus t cubed. So this is going to be t times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of t to the 3n. And then I can bring this t inside the sum and now write this as the sum n equals 0 to infinity of t to the 3n plus 1. What's the radius of convergence here? Let's find it now before things get messier. Well, remember, I'm going to look here for r. If t cubed is less than 1, then t has to be strictly between 1 and negative 1. So the radius of convergence is 1. Okay, so now my job is to integrate the sum n equals 0 to infinity of t to the 3n plus 1 dt. Okay, now just focus on the exponent. So I'm going to increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new exponent. So I have the sum n equals 0 to infinity t to the 3n plus 2 over 3n plus 2 plus c. And I know r is still equal to 1. In this case, I will not be able to find C. Why is that? Well, look at what the question was asking me for. The question was asking me to evaluate an integral. So I'm not representing a function as a power series. I'm not given an f of x, and my answer needs to represent f of x. I'm asked to evaluate an integral. And if I were able to do this directly, I would still have a plus C at the end of my answer, right? So in this case, the plus C remains. There's no way to find it without any more information. And we're done. So just make sure when you're trying to figure out whether or not you need to solve for C, you look at what the question's asking you for. Okay, that concludes the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more and be sure to subscribe.